Sorry, I lost my papers. All right, we'll get started. Um, so good evening, everyone. Thanks for jumping on. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I am Boson Cottrell. Uh, currently, I'm a CEO at Station Marblehead, Ohio. And um, tonight's lesson is going to be on command philosophy, and then we'll kind of go over some open-ended questions, kind of the type of questions that you'll see from the board chairman um, at the beginning of your board usually. Sometimes they'll circle back around and go over some of these questions at the end. Or um, Usually if they'll go back over these questions at the end of your board, it might be something that they saw that kind of contradicted um, some of the stuff that they asked you at the beginning of the board. So they just want to retouch on that stuff. So um, for me, um, I'll kind of go over my command philosophy, but... Um, before I do that, I kind of want to talk about the importance of command philosophy um, and kind of some ways for you to, to come up with your own command philosophy and um, the things that I did when I was developing my own command philosophy. Um, to me, um, the purpose of command philosophy is, is a good way to put on paper what's important to you as a leader and what's important for your, for your people uh, to know to know about you, um, not just, and I also think it's a good way for your people to hold you accountable, what, what you're going to hold them accountable to and what they're going to hold you accountable to, what you expect them to hold you, the standard that you expect them to hold you to as well. Um, and it's a good way when they first come to your unit to uh, sit down with them and go over it with you. Um, and, and I think it's, it's, it's important to not just have it written down on a piece of paper, you know, and then just forget about it. Uh, I think you should refresh it with yourself from time to time. Remind yourself of what that command philosophy is and reflect back on it. And ask yourself and ask ask the people that, that work for you and, and with you and even, you know, um, your supervisors, like, hey, I am I doing this? Um, and, if, and if you're not, then, you know, maybe you should reflect back on that command philosophy and say, hey, this is... This is probably not right. Don't just put piece, you know, words on a piece of paper to have words on a piece of paper because someone said, "Hey, I should have a command philosophy." Um, I also don't, you know, part of me is is not about um, putting putting words on paper just to have words on paper. When when it comes to like, you know, NAV standards or your SORM or anything else, um, we should operate to that standard. Um, so I agree, you know, or I say the same thing with your command philosophy as, as with your NAV standards. Like, don't just put in the NAV standards to have it there. Um, if we're not operating that way, then don't have it in there. Let's, let's operate to the standard, if that makes sense. Hopefully that's, that's making sense what I'm trying to say here. Anyhow, um, as far as, like, how I kind of came about with writing my command philosophy is uh, the first thing I did is I kind of did some Google research because... You can Google anything these days. And uh, I read through probably like a hundred different command philosophies that I found online from all different branches of service and uh, kind of picked out what was important, you know, some keywords that I thought were important and reflected upon my leadership and the things that, that I thought were were important and, and the points that I wanted to get across. And uh, I can tell you that when I set the boards, I don't know, in 2010, I think is when I got my OIC certs, so, you know, nine years ago are way different than what I think are important today. So don't be afraid to, to, to know that, you know, as you evolve as a leader, uh, these things are going to change. Um, so don't think, you know, from unit to unit or even, you know, after you've been in command for a year that you can't, you know, evolve your command philosophy, if that makes sense. Um, but anyhow, moving on to my command philosophy, just to kind of give you an idea, and I'm not saying this needs to be your command philosophy at all, but... Um, Mine, I'll just kind of read it to you, is uh, uh, people, people are the Coast Guard's most valuable resource. We are all leaders, regardless of the rank rate worn on our collars. As leaders, we are entrusted with a unique responsibility to help our shipmates grow and improve. To grow and improve, we must be prepared technically, emotionally, mentally, and physically at all times. Through communication, coaching, teaching, and mentoring others, we display our care for each other. I expect each of you to treat everyone with dignity and respect training. Everything we do revolves around training. Our purpose is to complete the Coast Guard's mission as professional mariners in service to the public. To do so, we must trust, we, I'm sorry, to do so, we must constantly train and develop a desire for professional knowledge, 
Training is maintaining. Maintaining our station, our equipment, our health, our shipmates, and our families. Set your shipmates up for success by passing along your knowledge and experiences. Most importantly, never stop learning. Excellence. Don't just do your part, do your best. Our actions reflect our Coast Guard core values of honor, respect, and devotion to duty. We must, we must serve our community through our high standards of excellence. We are not perfect. We will make mistakes. If we make a mistake, we will acknowledge that mistake, adjust, and move forward. Attitude. Our attitudes reflect who we really are, how much we care about making a difference, and how we make it happen. Be proud of what you do. Be proud of our station in the Coast Guard. If you see a problem, provide a solution and act upon that solution. Be the best Coast Guardsman you can be, but not at the expense of your shipmates. Leave Station Marblehead better than you found it. So I think, like as you can kind of see, and I'm sure like everybody's heard command philosophies, whether it's, you know, from the Commandant, um, from your Sector Commander, from land area, pack area, whatever it is, uh, everybody usually has key words, you know, train, maintain, operate from the Boat Forces Standard all the way, you know, from... Um, you know, ready, relevant, responsive from the commandant right now or whatever. So it's it's really easy um, when you're going before the board to, you know, pick three or four key words, you know, people, training, excellence, attitude. Those are my, my four key words. And then be able to explain what those words are. Um, uh, what, when, you, when you pick those words, make sure that they have a meaning to you. Don't just pick words because you think those are the words that the board members want to hear or that they... They think, oh, those are good key words, like, you know, because um, we're going to know if that's just smoke or if that's that's something that actually you put some time and effort into. Um, also with that, um, when you're going and you're, and you're saying those key words and you're kind of explaining what those words mean, uh, you're going to see pretty much every board member is going to be taking notes. Um, the, what we're doing when we're taking those notes is we're writing those words down, and as we go through the board and we're asking you additional questions, we're seeing if your actions and your words reflect back onto that command philosophy. So, you know, if you're, if, if like my, the first word in my command philosophy, the key word is people. And I walk around the station all the time and I say, take care of your people, take care of your people, take care of your people. And if, you know, if, if I'm the board candidate and I'm sitting here and the first word I say is my command philosophy is people, and then, you know, I get a scenario where it's a discipline scenario and I say, I'm going to hammer this person, I'm going to hammer this person. Well, am I really reflecting back on my command philosophy? Or did I just say, I'm going to take care of my people because that's what I think the board wants to hear. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and when you guys are kind of developing these command philosophies, you're, you're understanding that you're not just going to tell us words that you think we want to hear. That you're actually letting your command philosophy reflect who you are as a leader. And that that's truly, the you're going to let that command philosophy um, guide you in, in your decisions as, as, the, as the OIC when you're actually in that position and when you're making these scenario-based decisions on your board. Um, so, sorry, my dog is barking at people outside. Um, so kind of moving on from that, um, some advice, um, I talked about people in my command philosophy, but um, just some really good advice um, from experience in command. Um, just take care of your people. Your people will take care of you. Um, that's the best advice I could give you. Um, you know, always stay humble and kind. You don't know everything. Um, nobody expects you to know everything. and there's, You will gain way more respect by simply saying, I don't know. Um, but obviously you have to have knowledge and you have to have experience. So you can't walk into the office every day and say, well, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But it's very humbling, or it's, it's, it's very, it's okay to, to be humble. It's a good thing to be humble and simply say, hey, I don't know, or hey, I was wrong. Show me the answer in the manual. And, you know, hey, I made a mistake. We're going to correct it. Just like in my command philosophy, we're going to correct it. We're going to, we're going to move on. Um, at, we're all human. We make mistakes. We learn from those mistakes. Some of the best growth happens uh, when we make mistakes. Uh, best growth as leaders and, and as uh, professionals. So uh, everybody makes mistakes. If I sat here and said I didn't make mistakes, I'd be lying to you. So, um, but uh, with with getting to know your people, you know everybody's different. We we lead everybody differently. Um, you know, some people respond to to uh, you know the 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 heavy fist, and some people respond to the coaching and the mentoring. So. 
uh, as a leader, you know, you have to know to, to, to lead people differently. We can't lead them all the same. Um, but anyways, moving on from uh, my command philosophy and, and kind of how to develop your own command philosophy, um, some additional questions that you might see or hear from, from the board chairman on that is, um, um, you know, how did you develop your command philosophy and um, what influenced you uh, in developing your command philosophy? Um, and then provide examples of how you have implemented your command philosophy on a personal level. And um, how would you implement it or how have you implemented your command philosophy with your subordinates? And then uh, kind of moving into some other leadership type questions that you might see, kind of some uh, open-ended questions. And I'm, I'm not going to really answer these questions for you guys. Um, I'm just going to kind of put these out here as rhetorical questions, kind of get you guys thinking, because these should all be personal questions. Um, if people want to kind of throw their answers into the comments on here, you're more than welcome to. But um, these are just kind of to get you thinking and, and kind of do some self-reflection on yourself as a leader. But um, uh, tell me why you think you are ready to be an officer in charge and what have you done to earn or prepare for such a tremendous responsibility? Um, how would you and your peers or subordinates describe your leadership style? What book on leadership are you currently reading? And then describe what, what lessons you are learning from that leadership book that you're currently reading. If you're not reading a book on leadership or you're not doing anything to currently improve your leadership, then I would strongly recommend you are. Not just in preparation for the officer in charge review boards, but... Uh, we should always be striving to uh, improve our leadership. You know, one of, the, one of the questions you often hear in leadership or one of the biggest complaints that you hear is, uh, I don't know why, you know, there's not enough emphasis placed on leadership in the Coast Guard or, you know, the Coast Guard doesn't spend enough money training, training people on, in leadership. You know, I get LAMS or I get the ALP program and I uh, don't get anything till Chiefs Academy or, or whatever. Um, but there's a lot of ownership that needs to be placed in our own professional development and our own leadership. Um, we can learn a lot about leadership just from, from those who have led us, whether it was poor, poor leadership or positive leadership, and just having those tough um, leadership conversations with, with each other. And then also just, you know, investing our time in, in reading about leadership. Um, for those of you that don't know, the Commandant every year puts out a, the Commandant's reading list. And usually the majority of those books uh, on that list are books on leadership. So um, if you haven't uh, taken the time to look at that or if you've, if you've never heard of it, uh, go to the portal and just search the Commandant's Reading List. And uh, there's some great books on there. And uh, I would take the time to uh, find one of those books and, and, and go through it. You know, one, once a quarter or so, try to read a book on leadership and, and improve your leadership. So... Uh, um, moving on to some more leadership type type questions. Um, what is your greatest strength as a leader? Um, uh, what are, what are your what is your greatest flaw as a leader? Um, how do you maintain self awareness as a leader? Describe the greatest leadership challenge you've been placed in by the Coast Guard, and how did you deal with it? Describe the best leader you've ever worked for and what made them such an effective leader. And then alternatively, describe what a bad leader looks like and what made them such a poor leader. I will give you some caution with that. Um, you never know who the board members know and who their best friend is and who they think a, 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 the best leader is or who their mentors were or whatever. Um, so I wouldn't say, you know, by person, who this person was. Um, you know, they, they may try to pry, well, who is that person? But um, I, I, would, I would stray away from saying a person's name because who you think is a great leader may be who I think is the worst leader on, in, on the planet. Our experiences may be different, you know what I mean? Um, so I would try to stray away from by name, and I would just say, you know, these are the traits that, that I think... Uh, make a poor leader. Um, 
me personally. But you answer that question how you want. These are just some rhetorical questions that, that uh, I challenge you guys to think about and be prepared to answer. Um, and then there's going to be another lesson on command climate uh, later in the college, but some things that kind of go along with command climate <coughs> and command philosophy that I kind of wanted to bring up is uh, 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 what is command climate and who or what makes a, a, com a command climate good or bad in your opinion? And if upon taking command of a new unit, you perceive that uh, there's a poor command climate, how would you go about improving that command or that climate? And then also, what is a Diomi survey and how often is the DOX required? And what information or indicators might, uh, pro might be provided in that survey? And what would you do uh, with the results of that survey? And then... Uh, uh, Master Chief Pitney also just posted on there, if you guys didn't see the question on there, that uh, be prepared to take ownership for anything that's in your record. Um, we do get to look at your PDRs before you guys uh, come into the board. So, um, you know, there is definitely, um, you know, any negative page 7s or NJPs that are in there, um, we, we can ask you questions. And, and like Master Chief said, um, you know, the, people make mistakes. Uh, we're all enlisted once, even us bosuns, so, um, you know, we made mistakes. We, we're going to continue to make mistakes. Just just own it, you know. Uh, don't be cocky about it, though, you know. Just just tell us what you learned from it and, and how it's made you a better leader or, or you know, what, what it's done to, to get you to this position or what you learned from it. And, uh, you know, own it. Yep, I did this. I made a mistake. This is what I learned from it, and this is how I, how do I, how I you know, this is, this is the leadership lesson I learned, and, and this is how I can take that lesson and, and uh, you know, use it as a teaching moment for the people that I'm going to lead in the future at my unit. So um, That's pretty much what I had for, for everybody today. Um, thanks for signing on. Hopefully uh, everybody got a good chance to kind of think about some of the, some of the things that uh, you might be asked. And kind of stick on here for a couple minutes if anybody has anything they'd like to add or any questions they'd like to ask. I know there's a little lag, so we'll give it a couple more minutes here. Um, Gabe, I would say um, just my own growth and my own leadership. Uh, you know, um, you know, nine years ago when I was when I was a BM one in in kind of a a young BM one when I sat the OIC boards is not. Not who I am today as, as uh, you know, uh, a, a little more mature, a little older. Uh, my daughter was much younger. Where I wanted to be in the Coast Guard was not the same place that I want to be in the Coast Guard now. My career goals are not the same. Um, I was definitely more operational, uh, more ops-driven than I am today. Now I'm more, you know, people-driven. So, you know, people first, mission always. Um, where, you know, as a young BM1, I was probably more, cared more about the mission than I did about the people. That's probably a bad thing to say, but that's, that's the honest, honest truth. So, um, I'm always thrilled, Ben. Uh, but, uh, that, that, that's probably the honest truth there, Gabe. So we all, we all develop and, and, and grow. So hopefully that answers your question. Uh, how standard are the questions across the districts? Uh, so I know that, uh, you know, the Rating Force Master Chief is supposed to uh, make sure that the boards are standard across the district. I know that Master Chief Hofling did a pretty good job of auditing the boards across the district. Um, you know, every board chair gets to, and, and each person gets to ask their own questions in their own type of manner. But uh, for the most part, you're getting... 
the same type of questions, and it may not be the exact same question, but the, the questions are pretty standard. No matter where you go, you're going you're gonna to get the same type of leadership questions. You're going to get the same, same type of, you know, SAR questions. You're going to get the same, you know, there's only so many questions we can ask about search patterns. There's only so many questions we can ask about leadership. But uh, for the most part, the boards are pretty standard across, across, the, across the way. And I know Master Chief hopefully did a great job of that. And uh, I think that it'll continue to get better as, as, as we continue to move through the process each year. You're welcome. Um, so currently I'm reading um, a leadership book that's called, Hey Master Chief Jones, how are you? Um, currently I'm reading a, a book that's called First Break All the Rules, and I know that sounds kind, kind of like a strange book title on leadership, but it's actually so far pretty, a pretty good book, um, and it talks about how you have to lead everybody differently. Um, you know, every leader looks different, so every individual is different. We can't lead everybody uh, the same way. And I kind of mentioned that a little bit earlier in the training. Um, you can't, you can't, you can't punish the masses for one person's mistake. Um, you know, I know that you know earlier on, earlier on in my Coast Guard career, you know, there would be you know one person couldn't uh, start a P6 pump, so. Everybody at the station is going to go out there and start the P6 pump every single day for a month, you know. Um, we're going to punish the masses for one person's mistake or, you know, one person showed up late to work so everybody's going to come in early. Um, you can't do that. That That's not, it's, it's not effective leadership. So that's kind of what this book, First Break All the Rules, is about. So far, I'm about a quarter of the way through it. I think it's a really good read. Um, uh, leaders... Leaders Don't Eat First is another really good book. Um, uh, there's a lot of good books out there, so um, I would just kind of start with the Commandant's reading list. That's where I would go first. He's got a lot of good ones on there right now. Any other questions? Yeah, no problem. You're welcome. Um, I think it's the, Gabe, to answer your question, I would say it's, uh, getting to know, getting to know the people, um, the camaraderie, the friendships, um, learning about people's, people's stories. Um, it's just, it's, it's just awesome to be a part of an organization. The Coast Guard, you know, it, you're not a number in the Coast Guard. Um, getting, getting to, uh. Getting to just know people on a personal level, um, spending time with them. I love getting underway on, on, on small boats, getting underway on the 87 and just building building that camaraderie, sitting on the bridge, getting underway late at night and just uh, getting to know the people and, and hearing their story and different walks of life and sharing our stories. That I think that's that's the best part of being a leader and, and you know, watching someone come to the Coast Guard from, a, you know, eight weeks of boot camp and then seeing seeing when they leave to go to a school and 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 their growth as, as a person and as a coast guardsman is just it's rewarding so i would say that's the best part or my favorite part of being a leader
Anybody else? All right, I'll give it like one more minute here, and then uh, if there's no more questions that pop up, I'm going to sign off. But <laughs> Okay. What would be your advice to a BM3 who is full of potential and aspires to be an OIC one day? Um, I would say to a BM3, first of all, get all the uh, qualifications you can. My personal, my personal opinion is... Uh, you know, choose a, a either a multi-mission track or an Aton track as a young BM3 uh, and try to stay in that track. I think that the detailers currently are on that on that same belief and, uh, you know, they'll tell you if, as a BM1 if you haven't been to Aton or if you haven't been to multi-mission, then, you know, kind of don't try to go into that track, which my personal opinion, I agree with that. Um, I'm a multi-mission girl, never done a day of Aton in my life and don't think I ever will at this point, but... Uh, Nothing wrong with doing Aton, nothing wrong with doing multi-mission, but uh, I believe to be, you know, proficient in, in masters of our crafts, you should choose one one, uh, one side or the other. Um, and then, uh, you know, we, we need people on large cutters, but uh, as a young BM3, try to try to get uh, your cox and quals at a station or uh, an ant if, if you're going to go the Aton realm and then try to get on a cutter as a BM2 uh, where you can get a deck watch officer letter and... Uh, you know, earn those qualifications so you can go sit before the board as a, as a BM1 and, uh, you know, earn your certifications and, and uh, try to get as to, to uh, you know, switch through the collateral duties at the units that you're at so that you get the experience as the RNS petty officer, as the weapons petty officer, as the training petty officer, etc. cetera. Um, and then, uh, you know, work with the command and ask to be brought in on different command scenarios and, and, uh, given an opportunity to uh, look at command perspectives on how situations are handled and and get some experience there so that you're ready when you go before the board. That would be my advice. Any alibis? All right, well, thank you, everybody, for signing on. Uh, hopefully you guys got something out of this. And uh, looking forward to a, to a great uh, season of college. And I would uh, absolutely recommend that if you are serious about sitting the boards that uh, you get with BM1 McGowan and uh, sit for one of the uh, mock boards on here. I think that that's probably one of the best things you could do. It's uh, We did a lot of them for the last uh, spring boards, and I think that that's probably – uh, one of the most beneficial things you guys can do. So there's a lot of great uh, COs and OICs on here that are uh, willing to offer up their time and their advice, not just uh, through, this, through this app here with the Facebook and the college, but uh, I'm available anytime. Reach out to me on, on Skype or through an email or whatever in Global. And um, if you guys have any questions or whatever, absolutely I'm available. So feel free to reach out. So good luck. Have a good night.